People have been speedrunning Minecraft for a very long time and have even managed to beat the game in under 10 minutes. But that actually happened a few years ago. In my last video, I talked about how speedrunners reached a sub-10 time in Minecraft. Since then, there have been 6 new world records over the span of around 2 years. 1.16 is the most popular version for speedrunning due to its incredible potential speed. Getting first place in this game is incredibly difficult, requiring tons and tons of hours put into this game. Many new strategies and techniques were necessary in order to get where we are now. This is the Minecraft World Record Progression. Okay, well, it's not the whole thing, but you get the point. Also, subscribe, please. The date is April 19th, 2021, and Brentilda has achieved the very first sub-10 Minecraft speedrun, a minute barrier some people thought was impossible. It also broke the previous world record by a minute and 30 seconds. Obviously, a crazy run like this would take a long, long time to beat, and it did. It would take a whole 9 months to catch up to Brentilda. During this time, Minecraft was pushed to its limits. Tons of new strategies were made, and it's quite apparent from the first few seconds of this world record. Cube 1337X would enter a world and immediately locate a shipwreck. Those of you who aren't that familiar with Minecraft speedrunning will probably be confused with what you just saw. This is known as the wall. It's a way Minecraft speedrunners can reset multiple instances of the game at once. Ever since Brintilda's run, speedrunners realized that in order to get a world record, an amazing seed was needed. This also led to runners playing mainly only ocean seeds as they contain a buried treasure or a shipwreck, which is the fastest way to get a ton of iron. Cube does just this and gets a whole 19 iron ingots. He uses a pressure plate to get wood from the boat and crafts everything he needs. He then boats around until he finds a magma ravine. Using this, he enters the nether in 1 minute and 39 seconds. Immediately, he pauses and lowers his FOV in order to locate a bastion. This is known as an E-Ray and it utilizes the F3 menu to scan for a high concentration of entities. Once he knows where to go, he's off. Unfortunately, his nether spawn was in a ravine which cost him about 20 seconds. At around 3 minutes, he's in the Bastion. This one is known as a Bridge Bastion, which is commonly considered one of the slower ones. He performs a standard route by getting the gold blocks on the chalice and getting a ton of pigs in a hole. As he loots the chest and gets his trades, he has plenty of ender pearls, fire resistance, and string for beds. Something else to note is that Cube has 20 obsidian, which will be important later in the run. He had already located a fortress, so that's where he was heading. A few pearls later, and he was at the fortress at the 5 minute mark. You'll notice that as he arrives, he lowers his render distance down to 5 chunks. This is known as 5RD. In short, it allows a ton of mobs to spawn. In this case, Cube gets a lot of stray blazes, so much so that he doesn't even have to locate a blaze spawner. After getting 6 rods, he uses 10 obsidian to go back to the overworld. Cube needs to find the stronghold, and the way speedrunners do this is by using a calculator. While it used to be a heavily debated topic if they should be allowed or not, they're permitted and are the fastest method of finding the stronghold. Unfortunately, it's not on his overlay so we can't see it, but Cube gets a good reading and knows it's not too far. Traveling back into the nether, he throws two pearls and arrives at the correct spot. Using his remaining 10 obsidian, Cube builds another nether portal, this time ending up directly in the stronghold in under 8 minutes. With a perfect stronghold navigation, he locates the portal room and enters the end on world record pace. At 8.44, the dragon perches and with 4 explosives, Cube claims the world record with a time of 9.06, later retimed to 9.08. Oh my fucking god, dude! Fucking, oh my fucking god, dude! Holy shit, dude! Oh my fucking god! Holy fuck, dude! Oh my fucking god! Holy shit, dude! Oh my fucking god! Oh, real quick, you'll notice that there's two timers. One of them is real time or RTA, and the other one is in game time or IGT. IGT excludes things like game loads and pauses, and is the time that the leaderboard goes off of. This run was played incredibly well. There were a few parts where he got unlucky, but ultimately this run finally broke Brentilda's 279 day world record. As great as this is, there's more to talk about which brings me to the next one. Six months later, on July 30th, the time was lowered down to 8 minutes and 36 seconds by Saggy Enderman. Sa Sagai? Sagi? Saggy. Okay, Saggy. Starting on an island, Saggy notices a shipwreck and swims out to it. From there, he gets enough materials for tools, a bucket, and a whopping 20 pieces of bread. A nearby magma ravine allows him to enter the nether and he immediately notices a jump in the entity counter. Arriving at the fastest bastion, housing, he does a top-down route and gets a ton of piglins trading just 3 minutes into the world. Getting everything he needs, he's out and books it to the fortress. He lowered his render distance before entering, which allowed a ton of mobs to spawn. Going 6 for 6 on blaze rods, he managed a fortress split of about 30 37 seconds. Placing a portal down, he then does an advanced technique and oh, never mind, he left the world by accident. 
Ignoring that, he gets the angle of the stronghold and travels through the ocean to get there. Pulling around the island, Saigi notices an ocean exposed stronghold. And now he's about to enter the end on world record pace. Waiting for the dragon, it finally perches. He accidentally overshoots but makes it to the fountain quick enough to hit the one cycle and get a world record. This run is more than just the game though. There was actually a minor controversy with it. Saggy was not a known runner and some people didn't want to accept that this was the new world record. Paired with the fact that he accidentally left the world, which usually unverifies a run, it was easy to hate on it. Luckily, it was eventually verified and accepted, which cemented Saggy as a part of Minecraft speedrunning history. But only for three months, thanks to this next player. Dugile, one of the best bridgers of all time and now one of the best speedrunners of all time. Anyways, let's get into the run. Immediately, I have to explain something Duke does here. First, he opens his F3 menu and spins around. Then, after a few rotations, he digs on a seemingly random spot to find the chest filled with a ton of stuff. For those of you who don't know, this is called Mapless Buried Treasure and it lets you find a buried treasure without a map. By using the pie chart, you can look for entities like a chest. They always spawn at 9-9 in a chunk, so that's where to dig. Buried treasures are completely busted for speedrunning. First off, they have iron and food, which should go without saying how necessary they are. Something else though, is TNT. We see Doog use it to blow up trees and get a ton of wood very quickly. It also gives him blocks in the form of dirt, which help him navigate around the nether. A magma ravine right off the island lets Doog enter the nether at 122. From there, he takes a short trip to arrive at a housing bastion. Breaking the chest in the middle, he starts the manhunt route. With some lucky trades and the chest at the bottom, he has all necessary requirements to locate a fortress plus 20 obsidian for calculated travel. Leaving in an insane 3 minutes, he throws 3 pearls to end up at a fortress. Here's another bonus of TNT. Dugile arrives at a spawner and needs to clear out space to let more blades spawn. The fastest way of doing this is with TNT, which is exactly what he does. He gets 5 rods and in the meantime he sets a blind portal down to calculate the distance to the stronghold. 2 I have ender throws later and he knows where to place his second portal down. Running out of food, Duke needed to perform a death reset, so after that he went back into the nether to get his 6 rod. For the record, he ended up going 6 for 13 on rod drops, which is a stark difference between Saggy's rates. A small travel later and Duke places his second portal down to end up right in the stronghold. From here, he does another technique known as preemptive. Again, using the pie chart he's able to look for entities like mob spawners to get the direction of the portal room. He gets a good reading and nails the navigation to enter the end before 7 minutes passes. About a minute of waiting later, the dragon perches and Duke hits a clean 4-bet to get the world record with a time of 8 minutes and 15 seconds. This guy is absolutely insane. He's honestly one of my favorite runners and recently it feels like he's posting a sub 10 run every day. I'm hoping he'll get another world record someday, but we have to continue and talk about someone who actually has gotten the world record multiple times. The year is 2021 and the world record is only 14 minutes and 7 seconds, but who set that world record? Rainex. And I guess the person we're about to talk about, Zionox. Anyways, if you watched my last video, you might remember that in a crazy set of circumstances, Zionox managed to get a tied world record with Rainex. Well, being tied wasn't good enough for him because he's back with another first place time. The upcoming runs are going to be pretty similar and that's shown immediately with Mapless Buried Treasure being used. Similar to Doog, Zalanox gets food, tools, and wood and starts to swim to a nearby magma ravine. This nether enter is insane with a time of 1 minute and 8 seconds. The spawn is equally as crazy with Zai locating a bastion and fortress right off the bat. Again, this bastion is a housing type and I hope you're noticing a pattern here. Using the same route as Dugile, he gets his pearls, string, and 20 obsidian. Here's something that really shows the level of awareness Zai had in this moment. Instead of running all the way to the top of the bastion, he started digging his way out. This is because before he entered the bastion, he noticed that the backside was mostly open. Thanks to this observation, he was leaving the bastion at the same pace as Dugile. The difference is that Zai's fortress is much closer. So close that his travel from the bastion only took 9 seconds. Zalonox was also able to blow up blocks around the spawner, increasing the blaze spawns. A big time save here was that while Duke had below average blaze rates, Zalonox went 6 for 9. Triangulating the stronghold, Zai knew where to go and was already on his way there. Two pearls later, he started to build a second portal in a lava lake. With preemptive navigation, he knew where to go and got to the portal room 15 seconds later. A classic end split later, the dragon would perch and Zalonox would get the title. Dude! <laughs> Holy shit! 
In fact, Xyronox would hold this record for the longest time in all of Minecraft speedrunning history. Brent Tilda's seemingly unbeatable world record lasted for 9 months. This one would stay at the top for a whole 10 months and 3 days. At times, it felt like this was the final time anyone would achieve in the game. Months went by without any large leaderboard changes. Xyronox had seemed to break this game. People were coming close, but no one had gone all the way. That changed on December 8th when the runner No Fear entered into a world. As custom, it starts off with mapless buried treasure. You'll notice that its resolution changes, and this is because it makes finding the treasure easier. Unfortunately, this one didn't contain any TNT. So, in order to get a good amount of blocks quickly, No Fear crafts shears and gets leaves from the tree. In the distance was a ruined portal. Luckily, it was able to be completed and allowed No Fear to enter the nether about 30 seconds slower. On his entrance, he loads a bastion and right behind him is a fortress. This bastion is a new one, treasure. Considered the second best bastion, the time difference between it and housing is negligible. Performing a slightly risky route, No Fear has his pigs in a hole incredibly quickly. After his trades and checking the chests, No Fear only has 10 obsidian. However, the past two records both use double travel to get to the stronghold quickly. But No Fear already knew what to do, and we'll see that in a bit. For now, he gets to a fortress, but is about a minute behind Xyonox. His big time save comes from the fortress. Killing 6 blazes, 5 of them drop rods, and No Fear decides to leave with a fortress split of 35 seconds. But doesn't a portal require 12 eyes of ender? Yes, but No Fear is already on an insane pace with no more blazes in sight. He decides that the best decision at this point is to just high roll on the portal already having two eyes filled in. This is a 34% chance, so if everything went by probability, this run wouldn't have finished. Getting back to it, you might have noticed that upon entering the fortress, No Fear threw an ender pearl and lowered his render distance. This is known as a pearl hang. When a pearl is thrown into unloaded chunks, it won't land. No Fear can increase his render distance at any point and the pearl will fall, teleporting to wherever he threw it. Doing just this, he ends up back at his original portal. This is how he got around only having 10 obsidian. Instead of using 10 for the first portal like we've seen from others, No Fear is using a strat known as Home Portal. From here, he can enter the overworld, triangulate the stronghold, and go back into the nether to build a portal. Something interesting to note is how lucky this overworld actually is. While most runs utilize a magma ravine to enter the nether, this one used a ruined portal. Because of this, his home portal isn't at the bottom of the ocean and rather already on the surface in a good place to measure his eyes. After he knows where to go, it's a short travel in the nether to his second portal coordinates. He builds the portal and is put right in the stronghold. With insane navigation, he's able to find the portal room in about 5 seconds. No Fear isn't entering the end immediately, which may seem like a time loss, but actually isn't. No Fear is on a slower pace than Xyonox and needs to speed up. His plan is a zero cycle. A zero cycle is a way that runners can skip waiting for the dragon perch and instead bridge up to a dragon's flight path and use beds to kill it incredibly fast. It's quite difficult and often requires a bit of setup. Not to mention that it's straight up impossible on some seeds. With world record on the line, No Fear crafts his beds, fills in the eyes, and enters the end. No Fear kills the dragon and gets a world record with a time of 724, later retimed to 726. This run is absolutely insane. The skill and luck required to pull this off are top notch. Everything felt so polished. Incorporating a zero cycle was the cherry on top. It's interesting especially because zero cycles have been around for a while. They've been discovered even before Cube's record but have never been done in a world record run. That changed with No Fear. Well, this run cut off about 20 seconds. It took the whole community 10 months to beat Xyonox, so surely this is where the record stands, right? About that. Less than a month later, right after the new year rolled around, Drip120 got this insane run. Yeah, no. I'm not gonna do the summoning salt thing again. As normal, it starts off with mapless buried treasure. Luckily, the gravel on top of the treasure gave Drip flint, saving him a bit of time. One TNT later and he had tons of wood and dirt. After crafting all his materials, he takes a quick boat ride to a nearby magma ravine. Entering the nether at 118, Drip is immediately faced with the treasure bastion. Making his way there, he starts his route. About a minute and a half later, he had everything he needed and started heading to a fortress he saw earlier. Unfortunately, his pearl didn't go quite far enough and ended up at the bottom. With another pearl, he got up and started killing blazes. It didn't start off great 
great, going 0 for 3, but his luck would take a quick turn as all of the next 6 blazes he killed would drop rods which allowed him to leave the nether. One good reading later and he was off to the stronghold. Fortunately, the terrain was on his side and he was able to place his second portal down and get into the stronghold at 523. Fun fact, this run was able to break the stronghold enter world record. Previously, it was a 527 set by Crooks all the way back in 2022. Anyways, Drip does preemptive and finds the portal room almost immediately. In the end, at 544, the world record is in the hands of the dragon. Less than a minute later, the dragon snaps, indicating the perch, and Drip becomes the 1.16 RSG world record holder with a time of 7 minutes and 1 second. But hold on, is this run actually the record? After his run, Drip got notified that his run wouldn't get verified by the mods. Hearing this might make you assume that he cheated, but that couldn't be further from the truth. This run is completely legit. The reason for the rejection is due to an unverified mod. All it does is prevent a bug that causes the game to crash. So, while almost everyone in the community agrees that this run should count, the moderators of speedrun.com were against it. Fortunately, this ends up as it should and after enough backlash, the moderators went back on their decision resulting in this run being official. And as of me editing this video, this is where the record stands. It's been a long journey with tons of new revelations that result in this game getting shorter and shorter. Back during the first sub 10, some people thought that that was the limit. Even before that, some people thought 10 minutes was impossible. And even as the time gets lower and lower, I'm sure this game isn't done yet as long as there's people to play it. That's gonna be all from me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.